Yeah. So last week we discussed about different different server availability zones, storage database, and uh, we also did a sample application. Okay. So that's where we are. So today, what is the agenda? Today, what I will do is I will explain to you testing tools from an AWS point of view. And importantly, the very important thing, this is for DevOps people or anybody in the world, this is very important, Selenium, uh, Selenium server, okay, is what we will host today as a part of our kind of a workshop. Okay, so I'll, explain, I'll show you how to host a Selenium server. Okay, and then that will be helpful so that you can see a Selenium running on AWS. So how much is important? Anything is an application, website, API server, database, anything is there as a part of component of your development that can be host, that can be kept in AWS. Similarly, Selenium server is the same thing. It's, just, it's a server, we're hosting it, the testers can use it. But as a AWS point of view, you need to know how to host a server, but how to develop a Selenium script, you don't care. Okay, but very importantly, where it is important, your CACD pipeline. So if you are developing a CACD pipeline, that is very important that you need to know uh, what is your, where is your Selenium server and where is your actual server? Because right now you can see this is the, your actual web application server. But wait, where is Selenium server? Because you may have to use that in your CACD pipeline because CACD's pipeline is nothing but deploying, deploying the code okay from github okay and then uh running running a test application so that people can test it so deploying from the code from github into running an application is part of cacd pipeline once that running is done then run automated test on on the pipeline it's like sequence and then release the production application okay see technically this is what happens as a part of cacd pipeline cacd is okay can i can somebody tell what is this what is the meaning of ci and cd continuous integration continuous, integration. continuous development development no. continuous increment continuous. No. continuous deployment deployment and deployment yeah okay Okay. Continuous integration and continuous deployment. 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 Okay. Excellent. Okay. That is called CICD. Okay. So, yes. And there are a lot of tools to actually do CICD. I think the biggest thing that normal Jenkins. Jenkins. Okay. But the good news is even Gen uh, AWS also have a Jenkins similar. Okay. So we can have AWS code build. Okay, two, uh, we can use this AWS code build, AWS code deploy and AWS code uh, uh, pipeline. This all will work like Jenkins. Okay, you can see here, software release workflows, build and test the code and the deployment automation. So let's not, I mean, this first, first and last are very, not very important, but build and test the code is very important. Okay, so let us go to AWS code build. Okay, AWS code. Do you have that? Where is this AWS code built? Okay. Why I'm typing AWS in the AWS? Okay. See, we have a code pipeline, code deploy, and code build is what I'm looking for, right? Yes. Okay. So as a tester, come DevOps. Okay, how many DevOps people are here? Can you raise your hands? How many people are from DevOps? Okay. Uh, I think Manisha, you are from DevOps, right? Okay, I think she's not very active, that's fine. Yeah, okay, yeah, I think there are few, there may be few people from DevOps, but that's fine. So now here, see here, this is a component called, what is the component which is actually, this is where the testing will be very, uh, testers will come into picture. 
what is their component called code build code build build code build so create a development project so i can do it so here i can actually create a like a jenkins equivalent okay so this code build is one of the component which can actually help to integrate your development deployment and testing deployment at the same time okay so we can use this as a tool okay so this is what this code build will do is it will help to do a deployment For example so because code build is nothing but it builds a code and it will automatically whenever developer commits a code it will take it and it will host it so that's kind of a building building your project and here we can actually link your development and testing that is the one of the important thing okay example you take no commerce no commerce and uh, ci okay ci continuous integration it's not continuous deploy we are not deploying to production okay we don't need to so example i keep it here then restrict number of concurrents we don't need to do that i'm just saying okay see here the code can be from GitHub. So example, I say GitHub because famously, as I said, this is like whenever we are doing a CICD, we have to mainly use GitHub because GitHub will have the source code. Okay, example, if you take my GitHub, I have a lot of source code with me. Okay, example, see here, I got some web applications, I got some Selenium stuff. For example, I have one web application. Okay, think about it. So I have one web application. So I can use this as my kind of a GitHub. Okay. Uh, so I can connect my GitHub. See here, I can connect my GitHub and it must for the password. I have two factor authentication. I will get a code. Uh, okay. It's taking it. Uh, perfect. Okay. See, I can link my GitHub into this so that I can use basically two things guys always whenever you are building something you will you can you can build a front end application and you can build a back end application also okay sorry uh, your automation testing build so that's also a build so i i see here i linked my repository with this then what i want to do uh, image. So do you want to any uh, Docker? I don't want to talk about Docker, but it is just asking what is your, uh, where I want to deploy, where, where is, where I want to build. So basically here, see Windows and Mac won't come into picture because typically, as I said, deployments mainly happen using your, your Linux and Unix. So runtime is standard image. I can use any image it doesn't matter image version enable flag if the build docker images want to build to get okay so right now i'm not using docker okay that is a different concept altogether uh, what file you want to use so i mean basically a build file is nothing but something if i want to run something what i have to do it's like that okay so right now example if you take any front-end applications like uh, example here see here i mean it is i don't want to go in depth guys but if you are working in like a devops or if you want to a little bit no more uh, so example i can use uh, package.json okay see here you will have scripts like npm uh, react start okay so we can give a command called uh we can insert uh like you know list of commands you can see here you can insert a list of commands uh but uh we can use a specific file so i don't i'm not giving a specific file i will just give a command okay single line so i will just say what is my command npm or npm build i can just use something like this okay define a batch configuration i'm not using any batch it's not like i just need one command here any artifacts i don't need any artifacts because i don't want to save anything like logs and stuff cloud watch i don't want to monitor that stuff and 
those kind of things I don't want. Okay. So in now as you can see here, I am creating a code build, which is nothing but it will help to de de deploy my front end application. Similarly, I will create one build for Selenium. That's where it is very, very, it will be good. Okay. You can see here, it is now created. So I got one GitHub link and I have some commands. If I click on start build, you can see here, some build is started. Okay. And what is happening in the build? If you want to go, this is just like Jenkins guys. Okay. But AWS version of Jenkins called, this is called code build. Okay. So it is very advanced. Similarly, let it complete. Let similarly, let we also can create something for automation testing. Okay. So now I, I'll create no commas automation. So even automation testing is typically, if you want to run an automation testing on CI/CD pipeline, the similar thing we have to do. Okay. Let us think that I want to run any example you have your doctor portal and all these things, right? So if I want to run anything like a, I got one healthcare framework app. So basically I think you people are doing some live project, right? So you may get a link. So that, that link is enough for me. Okay. I see here, I got Chrome driver and stuff. So that's fine. I can use that link. So I go back to my AWS and uh, GitHub again, uh, because AWS is also have a GitHub version of it, but I'm not using that. I use this and uh, connection status and then version. I don't need any specific version, image, anything is because it's a Java application. I don't really care about. It can be Unix or Linux. And the mainly, mainly thing is uh, the build command because I'm using Maven. So just to use Maven clean install. So because previously I used NPM because I am in Node.js, front end uses Node.js but our automation testing uses Maven. Okay, so Maven is what I use it. Artifact, yes, if you want to create an artifact, I can create it like reports and stuff, but let us not go into that depth now. And then uh, let us not do any logging system that I can create a build. Okay, operating system, let us think I just use Linux. I don't care, okay. Standard runtimes image is any basic image because this is a Java application. So basically the systems, AWS itself know how to run a Java application. So that, that AMI is behind it will actually have those installed, okay? Now here, see, see here, my other build is installed. So I can see here, the two things. One is front-end application and your automation test. That is exactly what will happen in your real time also. You have to link your test application, deploy the, front end application and we need to link that with your test application and then whenever we link it we run it then automation test will run okay so that is exactly what this this thing guys our testing point of view you need to know that yes you can run the automation test using code build so code build is one of the it's not a testing tool but it is it is like a ci cd pipeline so you can say that in my in my uh, i got some knowledge on in your CV also, you can keep that. I got knowledge on AWS code build, which is nothing but one of the important component of, well, it's one of the component of, uh, what is called, uh, uh, which is one of the component of AWS. Okay, you can see here, uh, it's still building up, but you can see the build logs and stuff. You can actually see here, okay? So you can see here, the build is, the building is happening. So you can see here, but uh, normally once it is all done, it will give the status, okay? We're still not yet completed the build, but you can see here, this is how it works, okay? So this is called code build guys, which is nothing but we have, see here, uh, this is finished. Now this one, if I want to run this application, uh, like running an automation test, I can start a build now, okay? Now even that build is getting executed, means, that automation test is getting executed indirectly. Okay. Guys, did you understand? Yes. Yes. Sir. Any questions?
Okay. So this is automation test and this is front end. So the both once you are auto front end is available, like the example, like this, you had deployed an application, then only you can run the test. But, but for that, you need to have a Selenium server, right? Otherwise we are not running it locally. So that is where we need to now create a Selenium server, which is nothing but one more application that we can host. Okay. Technically I'm telling that what you learned so far is AWS code build. And I shown you how to deploy a front end application. And also I have shown you how to deploy a automation test. Okay, run an application, it's nothing but Selenium. So end of the day, Selenium code is also a Java code. It doesn't matter, okay? But for everything, you need to have your uh, automation code. You can see here, I got some feature files. I think this is what you people know. There is some feature files here. Example, I want to uh, I navigate to this app. I logged in, I do blah, blah, blah. So this is like a, your test. And for that test, uh, Cucumber, because you people know what is Cucumber, you have Java, you have step definitions, and the step definitions are here. Okay, the other things are not implemented. There's some basic test, and there is some some other things. So this is like a sample framework. Okay, so this is a, this is the thing. So, but here till now you learned how to develop a script, but now I'm telling if your script is in GitHub, you can easily integrate with AWS uh, code build. Okay. Any questions on this before we go into Selenium server? Any questions guys? No, I'll try it and then if I'll, have, if I'll have any questions I'll ask. Yeah, you can use my my GitHub. Okay, you can see here my I got one automation test code, and you can use my GitHub repository. It is open for everyone. Okay, but you, you cannot uh, run everything, so I would suggest you can use this web web development front end for your. This is not a Selenium code; it's a React application, and similarly, you can actually use uh, my. Uh, if you got your own code in GitHub, absolutely fine. Go ahead. But if you think your code is not in GitHub, then you can use my healthcare framework. Okay, you can use this, doesn't matter. Uh, okay. Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Next thing is you can see here, now we can link this with code build. Okay, code build and all these things as the image suggest, suggests, you can see here, we can link code pipeline, AWS code deploy. Once the code build is there, you can link them. Okay, but I don't want to do that right now because I don't want to link them. But if you can see here, you can do code deploy, code pipeline. Code pipeline is nothing but list of jobs all uh, created like, you know, proper, uh, 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 you have to uh, see here, this is failed because there may be some problem, which I don't want to have a look, but this will this is where the tests but however if you want to link them you can use this pipeline deploy and uh you know like the source is there build is there so you can use the other thing but don't worry right now just concentrate on code build it's nothing but as individual job but if you link the jobs front end back end automation test as i said this for all these complete steps this is a pipeline but if individually if you're running this called okay let us make like this okay pipeline pipeline is nothing but set of jobs but individual job is called aws code build okay mm -hmm. run automation test and then run your individual job so first job will go to test server first last job will go to this one okay these all we do in Jenkins as well. It's the same like Jenkins, isn't it, sir? Yeah, yeah. In Jenkins also, we can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Most of the companies are generally using Jenkins, right? Yeah. Yeah. Circle CI, Jenkins, a lot of tools. Okay. Okay. Cool. 
next question i from my side next thing is let us talk about testing now let us talk about one more ec2 instance this time the ec2 instance that i want to do is not any front end application but this time i want a selenium selenium server okay you can see here we got a lot of existing selenium servers you can see here selenium web driver on windows selenium web driver on headless selenium web driver on ubuntu gui uh, aws lambda we got a lot of stuff here okay you can see here we got a lot of selenium dynamic grid grid elastic we got a lot of things okay so we also have a lot of existing amis on selenium is somebody already had hosted a uh, selenium uh, selenium uh, selenium servers okay so which we can actually ready madely use it so which one shall we take today let us see i just want a free version so that you can play around i don't want something paid okay let's see if this ami is free eligible then we can select uh, microsoft no. eligible for stolen no it is not sir because it is not clickable. Yeah, this is not correct. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's take some other AMI. Don't worry. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. See, one is available. There will be always some way if you have will. Okay. So, choose an existing pair. I got the existing because I'm using the same same computer. I won't have any problem. Let's upload it. Okay. So, guys, do you know what is Selenium Remote Web Driver? Anyone? remote web driver so if not you can actually kind of uh, google it transfer number payment was invalid at different payment of uh, okay i think there was it, this is they have some link with the payment okay otherwise i'll set up self as a different ami let's see hmm. i think the new payment okay Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see, sorry. Okay, I think we don't have anything other things. Okay, let's see. Mm. We selected Ubuntu, right? So let us this Ubuntu GUI. Let's see. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's see. This is this is just like one more EC2 instance, guys. But only thing is we need to get that selenium URL. We have to open that and we see a selenium grid on that okay then we are like done for today okay but uh, you you can use that url in your in your code try aws account payments in well add a payment method and try again okay maybe i need to add a payment method let's see Oh. Hmm. I think this is not, I don't want to do it now. Uh, do anybody have anything guys, any login? Can you give it to me? 
who has got account, I will try with your login because this is a different account. Can anybody share the credentials? One second. Yeah. Okay, um, this is the thing. And uh, yes, I can see, see how it's done a few things. So uh, coming to your, uh, yeah, one thing is work running. So let me do this. Okay, guys, so now, yeah, okay. So let us start this Ubuntu headless uh, Selenium server. Okay, create are eligible. Okay, so let's complete. So once it's complete, the only test that we need to do is, is the Selenium server up and running so that you can use that Selenium server on your automated test. It can be like Selenium or WebDriver, whatever it is, Selenium server address that you use. So um, did any of you guys know what is Sauce Labs? It's like browser stack. That's what I know. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't matter. They're the same. Yeah. Similar to browser stack. Yeah. Yeah, browser stack. Uh, similarly like you know it's taking some time but now when we created it it will be something like this okay so like browser stack okay so in browser stack what do you do you will get a url and you connect it example if you want to go to documentation um, so example you want to go to uh, Yeah, Selenium documentation, if you go, so here you will have what, what you are using here, Cucumber and this one. So here you can see here, you have the documentation. So here you can see here, this username authentication and uh, this authorization key, okay? This is what you will actually get it. And once you get that, normally you will use that here, okay? So this is called remote web driver. Okay, so you have to give the, it is like same creating a new driver object. You create Chrome driver is equal to new Chrome driver. However, here, instead of that, you actually use remote web driver. Object is same. Here's instead of you, normally you guys will put new Chrome driver, but here you have to create a uh, capability object. This is one thing. And then after that, you have to use this here. This is a remote web driver, which, which means that your, your test is running in remotely means it can be an AWS, it can be Sauce Lab or cross browser testing. Um, however, this URL is very important. This URL is what you have to use. Okay. And that URL should be a valid URL. Okay. So if you are using cross browser, they will give their URL. Sauce Labs will give their URL, but if, because you are you are gem in AWS, what you people will do is you will create your own URL. Okay. So that is what, okay, let's see, this is running. Yeah, see, Selenium web driver uh, uh, is the thing. Okay, now if you go into that thing, it looked like a normal service instance, but if you open the uh, IP address, where is the IP address? public IP address, okay? If you open this public IP address, what you normally see, let us check. Previously used to see a nice coffee website, but now what you, what is this server hosting? 
Is it hosting a website or is it hosting anything else, guys? It's a blank, I think. It's not blank, but what is the purpose? What we want to hosting a server. You want to open a Selenium server. Okay. So we need to have a Selenium server. Okay, even this one also worked. Okay. This one and this one doesn't matter. But only thing is it won't be loading because there may be not HTTP. Yes, that security protocol may be stopping it. Okay. That may be the reason. Okay. Similarly, here also, let us make it HTTP, not S. Okay, now if you go into this machine, while let us open it, if you go into the EC2 connect, I don't know whether the EC2 instance connect is there. Yeah, it is there. Let's go inside it and let us see inside. Oops, okay, maybe we have to use SSH then in that case. Okay. Let's connect to it like the way that we did last. You know why it is connecting? Because previously my account and now it is local.pm is Shweta's account. That's the reason why it is permission denied. Okay. Don't worry. We can do something. See, welcome. So, okay. Okay. Okay, let's see if we can connect. Okay, where is my EC2 instance again? This one. Okay, why it is not, you can't see anything is maybe, uh, Basically, Selenium will be there in WD Hub. Okay. So if you see this cross browser testing documentation, WD slash hub. Okay. 80 WD slash hub. That will be a, a typical IP address. Okay. So that may be the reason why. Okay. Let's see if we can at, uh, get through this 80 or maybe this IP address. Let's go to what is that 80, right? Uh, let's see. If you can got into the 80, okay. Sometimes it will be double four, double four also. Okay, let's see. Okay, so basically the only thing that we are now stuck up is we are trying to understand where that particular Selenium server is hosted. Which which port is it default port or is it specific port? Okay, let's see. Security. Okay, see here. Selenium web, okay, auto generated. So, source is this, security group is this, outbound, outbound rules, protocol all, okay. So, I think should be, we should be able to access. I don't think so, there is a big problem, okay. Plus, see guys, double four, double four, or 80, 80. You have to understand which port it is hosted, okay. What is the default port for Selenium, guys? Do you know? What is the default port for Selenium? Where the Selenium server will be hosted? Any idea? No. Yeah, Selenium will be hosted in double four, double four normally. Okay. That is what normally in double four, double four, Selenium will be hosted. Okay. Keep that in mind. Somebody ask you, say that double four, double four. Okay. That is where Selenium normally will host. Okay. So my point of view, let me connect. If I connect inside, maybe I can do some debugging and see. Serial port, register side is here. Port 40, 50, session manager, access to such client. Easy to connect. See if we can connect. No. Let's try to root user and see if we can connect. Okay. No. Okay. Other is running in a okay. And maybe that supports EC2. Okay. So this AMI is not supporting EC2 connect. Then only left is we have to use uh, our SSH client. Okay. 
So if you log into that, we will see what is happening. If the port is not properly exposed, first of all, we need to see the server is running or not. If yes, then we need to see, make sure that it is properly hosted out. The only problem right now is because previously, if you remember when I actually connected it, that uh, uh, the pair, you know, the pair which I downloaded, that security key which I downloaded, I use the same name of previous. Okay, that's the reason why it is creating a problem because previously I have a different account. So what I will do is let me create one more instance. We will terminate the instance. Don't worry, Swetha, uh, so that we will not have any problems. But let us let me do it again. Okay, one more. Hopefully, I will have created eligible. Yes. Okay, here when I launch, this is the pro this is where I did a mistake. So let me create a new pay. Now I'll put Sveta now download key pair. Then see here, Sveta.pm is what I got, which is nothing but this is like a password which I had downloaded in my computer. Now, if it, for this instance, I will not have any security problems. Okay, so you did understand that. Even though if I want SSH, go into the server and do something, then for that also, I I have to properly uh, have my, uh, what you called, uh, have the credentials and stuff, okay? So that is the thing, okay? Once it is done, I think it will be ready, guys. Uh, basically, right now you can see here, I need to sort out which port number is busy, what is happening. But if I go into the computer, I can go simply and, debug and where the selenium server is running i can go and fix it okay but this is very important once i got the url remaining things are all same once the server is up and running then it will go here you can see here we got the chrome driver and the capabilities point of view it says chrome driver on windows but right now we are in unix remove that line it will go and run so Basically, I can use the server uh, and then connect to my server. Then the Selenium test will take this URL as my base URL. Okay. So, uh, guys, we are running out of time. So, I will try to see see here. I straight away got the command. Uh, but for that, first of all, I need to go to my command line, go to downloads, make Sweta thing working. Now, I will go here, click on this. Yes. Okay. Yes. Am I connected now? Yes. Okay. See here. Now I'm connected. So my I am on the on that machine where the selenium is. Okay. So here, what I need to do, I need to check. Uh I need to check whether which port this specific uh server is running. Okay. So we are in Ubuntu, so uh, uh, see the running ports in Linux. Okay, let's see what is the command for that. And I will go and paste that command, okay? Anyone, command line, please open the ports, okay? To see open ports, uh, yeah, okay. Loss of okay, even syntax we can do this. Okay, let us don't do uh, l a sudo is not required. If I run this command on my SSH, I may see something now. Okay, now. I'm not getting anything. Let's see. Okay. So, what are the ports opening, guys? 53 and 53 is opened. Okay. So, what 53 is opened? 120. 53 is open. 22 is open. 22 is, is I think, FTP. 53 may be opened. Okay. Let's see. Now, how to test that is go to your instance and uh, get the IP address. And now this IP address, I keep it here, 53. 
type it. Okay, template image it down. Okay, HTTP yes you will try okay i think uh, you can see the server is running you can see here the server is running so but i can't access so that means that 53 port is not opened so how to open that 53 port now okay very very simple guys here there is something called security groups go to security and here incoming uh, port range. So what I can do now is go to the security group. It's very, very important guys. So here, what I will do is edit inbound rules, and then I will put uh, uh, SSH is here. I will put that uh, HTTP, and then I will put uh, anything. Okay. So Anywhere IP4 IP address, I put this save rules. Okay. If I do this, then technically that 53, where is my 53? This may get opened in HTTP. Okay. 53 and all right. So if I put HTTP and then this, this may open all the ports. Okay. Is it saved or not? Is it saved? Okay, security groups inbound SS HTTP port range 80 and uh, it is open. So let us put 80. Okay, give me one second, guys. Let me put 80 and see if something can be accessed. Okay, it's not yet. Okay, guys, I will fix that. I think this, I need a little bit debug it. Okay. It's a headless Ubuntu, isn't it? So does it have a GUI? It don't have GUI. It's a, it's a UI interface, isn't it? You can only do it with the three LI because it's a headless so instance, it's a headless Ubuntu. Yeah, I have to go do only the UNC. So like, yes, yes. We don't have UI. Only UI in the headless. previous one also, this was this thing. The Selenium was headless in the previous one. So I was thinking, but I thought I'm not sure. Yeah, headless. <laughs> yeah. See, basically, it is. See, there are two things. GUI means Ubuntu GUI is different. Linux UI is different. So here, this instant type is, where is that instant type? It is a, it's an AMI. Um, this one is an AMI. Which AMI is this belong to Ubuntu? So this is a Ubuntu. And it don't, Ubuntu will never have a UI. Okay? Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So guys, just leave it to me. This is my session. You can see here, I can CD dot dot LS. And I can do, I can play around whatever I want. Okay. And if I want to exit, if I do control C, I can exit the connection. Okay. Maybe what I have to do is maybe I need to go as a route and give a try. I need to debug this, but after that it will be successful. Once it is all done, I will place that Selenium server on your system. Then you people can go and plug in as you then that's fine. There's some problems, but I will fix it. But after some time, Maybe whenever I fix this, I will send you the URL of Selenium server. And what I want to do is, um, okay, so I will, let me connect and let me be here. Now I know what to do. The only thing is once it's all done, guys, I want all of you to go to this URL, which is this very nice. So I want you to do this test. Okay, you can see here there is small test. I want you to run this one, one, uh, one thing on your IntelliJ. I don't have IntelliJ here because I'm not using Java anymore, but uh, I'm using JavaScript, so I can't do it. But I want you guys to open your IntelliJ, copy paste this, this thing. Only thing is in this line number, change this and put my URL and run the test. Okay, then you will see a successful execution. That means that your Selenium grid is successfully running. Okay, is it making sense? Okay, guys, that way you can, we are proving that Selenium is running on AWS. That is your, that is the way that you, you, you run a Selenium on AWS and connect your local machine through that. So all the information is here. 
Only thing is that URL is what you have to change. This to basically, yeah, you want you have to change this to what? You have to change this to this, like this, where you put this one and four, 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 four. Then the test will run. Okay, making sense? Yeah. Yes, so we will try. Yeah. Okay. So that way we did Selenium server, website hosted in AWS. We had done a bit of RDS. We looked into how to do it. We did AWS code build. S3, we haven't done much. I can show, I had shown you. So AWS S3, AWS EC2 instance, AWS code build, RDS. And AWS EC2 instance point of view, we did a application deployment successful. We are doing that. We are doing a Selenium server deployment, which is almost success. So that is what, that is how you do the Selenium part. Oh, look, sorry, AWS part. So that is more than enough for any automation tester to know about AWS. Okay, guys. So is this the last session or does we have anyone? No, no, this is last session for AWS. That's it. Okay. So for whatever the AWS, AWS questions they'll be asking, we'll just put them into this conversation only that we know these does this thing. AWS questions. Yeah, yeah. Yes. See, AWS point of view, there's a vast ocean, guys. Don't think that you learn everything. If AWS is an ocean. It's like a big ocean and you have DevOps people know everything about it. As a tester perspective, what do you have to know? You have to know the definitions of few commands. You need to get hands-on, like what is EC2, how to start, how to stop, how to initiate, how to select an AMI. That's it. So AMI is, is nothing but a virtual machine. So how to start a virtual machine, how to stop it, or Selenium point of view, how to start a server, stop a server. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Shriram, sir, I wanted to discuss few things with you. What is the right time to talk to you on call? Uh, uh, it's only... Uh, yeah, can you call me like uh, five o'clock, maybe five thirty? Yes, I will. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I have few questions to ask on GitHub and uh, some Jira. Whom I can consult for that? Like five ten minutes. Who will be the best person to support me on that? Akash. Akash, he's in the group. Yeah, he's. Are you are you part of this? Uh, okay, let me stop the recording. Okay.